Welcome back to the Global Indian Podcast, home to the greatest conversations and the official platform for open and liberal minds. Because yes, let's face it, we are everywhere. Now, as you know, every single week we plunge ourselves into the human experience behind our perceptions of identity, take a second look at the countries we now call home, and tackle the big conversations. Well, this week is a follow-up to a conversation we had a couple of weeks ago with a good friend of the platform, Kaza, who owns the bank, Hamilton in Nevis. And we spoke about the identity of the Caribbean, coming face to face with some of the movers and shakers there and understanding first-hand perspectives yes. of what it takes. Today, I'm privileged to be joined by the wonderful Brian Stewart Young, and his surname does justice to his own youthful looks, as we're going to have a quick look into the wonderful world of Antigua and Barbuda. And as a way of introduction, Brian is the CEO of one of the largest distinguished banks within the region. More importantly, he has been a beacon of a light and a champion for social custodianship especially amongst the youth within the country. And he's been holding towards his roots, towards climate activism. So for change, we can look at the bankers, not with distrust, but we can look at them as guiding the way forward for a climate enhanced future. Brian, it is a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you, thank you and greetings uh, Raj and greetings to all of your people, all of, all of your uh, uh, audience that, that, that join you. I think you're, you're pretty much worldwide right now, aren't you? I, th I think we're getting that. I know that you get the podcast directly on your phone as well. So um, if we can reach Brian's mobile, I think we can reach anywhere else on the planet. So we're pretty lucky. Um, I suppose, Brian, the first quick question to have is, what's it like to be you? Because you got this incredibly fascinating background. Well, I, I hail from, from Guyana. Uh, I was one of those that was, I was fortunate enough to be packed off to a boarding school in England at about age 11. And, um, and, uh, and, and pretty much grew up or had my, 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 my youthful years there. Went back to, to, um, to Guyana qualified uh, and started working there. But I have since lived in, um, in the States. I, I got a Fulbright scholarship at some point. And, um, and worked there, and then returned again to 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 the Caribbean. And um, I think I visited just about every every island that there is. And uh, in 1976, decided I needed to pick a new location, um, and uh, and that was Antigua. And so I've been here now for uh, you know a generation and a half. And it's been a wonderful place for my my family. They adopt they adopted my wife and I, and we adopted an Antigua as our home. Um, now, I'm coming from Guyana. You you may know that Guyana has about five or six different bloods as such uh, in there. I probably have about five of them uh, in, in inside of me. But um, but uh, I. When I was looking at a place to change and, and, and live in, I looked closely. Quite frankly, Barbados was a, was a very big attraction. But when I looked at Antigua, I could see the potential in the future because it was a, a very calming place that had a, a lot of opportunity to grow. And I, I then learned that this was the home of a, of a fair amount of wealthy Americans having second homes that came here uh, after the, the war. And they too had searched various islands and they decided to, um, to reside here. And in fact, they have uh, homes passed on in their family that, um, that, that are still here. And so I came here, um, I have two children. My two children are married here to, to Antigans. Um, they have between them five grandchildren, and this is very much my, my is home. Is it? So I suppose coming from Guyana, having that Caribbean type of culture behind you, what does it mean to be Antiguan then for you? Uh, well, Antiguan, I consider, you know, uh, Guyana used to have a, a brand in, in the early days that it was the most hospitable, friendly place to, uh, to visit. 
I found it in the same way with Antigua. And, um, and uh, my family were very happy to, to be able to, to, to join here. Um, uh, I, I, when I first came here, I guess I was, I remember I had about five different jobs working at, at the same time. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and then eventually it was more focused on the, on the, on the banking side. Um, and I just grew in, in that, in that area, um, by learning, by working, by committing myself. Um, I've always been a person that it didn't matter where I worked or who I worked with. I mentally owned that that company and would serve it as if it was it was it was my own my own stock. Yeah. Uh, and and I think that's that's the way that um, I try to encourage everyone to um, to uh, to grow. Do I have said to my to my staff several times, I want each of you to be looking to be able to take over my chair now. Uh, do, do you feel that Antigua now is home out of all the countries that you've been to everywhere else on the planet because you often travel as well I know um, is Antigua more than just where your roots are in the sense of your grandchildren but is it now yes. your culture yes it is it is it, it, it's a, uh, I, I feel very deeply rooted here very committed um, I've tried to I've tried to use my 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 banking side and background to be able to um, to serve the economy because I think uh, many people come and they visit Antigua. Many people pass through Antigua. Many people come and work here and then pass through Antigua. Um, my family are very is, is very firmly rooted here in Antigua, and we believe in the people. And, uh, and we believe that it is um, a very democratic uh, um, country. Um, it has a very free press. Um, and we believe that they, it still has a bundle of new opportunities that can be, um, can be de developed. One thing that's quite interesting about you, because I know that you've been involved a lot when it comes to climate change. And having a look at the role of the banking institutions, especially in combating some of the bigger challenges that are taking place across the region. Now, as a bank, most people look at you and as one of the most senior bankers in the region, they're saying, are banks purely about profit and loss? And then, so hold, an organization like yours comes about and says, well, we're much more than that. We're actually looking at how we can actually be custodians for the country to combat some of the bigger challenges that we're facing. Now, Brian, I suppose the question is, why do you bother? Um, and why are you getting involved now when it comes to the climate change resilience that Antigua is trying to develop? Raj, I find it one of the most interesting and exciting subjects um, that we need to be in, involved in, uh, which is uh, to participate in the initiatives to address climate change. Uh, I do know, I mean, my families ask me when am I retiring my, my colleagues many of them have retired <laughs> and um, and I and I've, I do believe that it, it would be nice to, to retire for sure but the challenges and the opportunities um, uh, uh, to be able to take a company uh, or, or and take a country and align it to what are the demands of, uh, of climate change and to be able to, um, to contribute to even personal individual needs, social goals, you know. Um, we talk, there's a great deal of discussion about sustainable development goals. Well, when you, when you pare that down and, and certainly uh, um, uh, instruments and, and treaties that came out of the Paris Climate Agreement and other frameworks like, like that are, are very critical. But when you pare it down, it has to be the people of the commun community that that buy into it, that that develop it. I know, for example, that um, the AOSIS countries uh, and certainly the, the small island developing uh, states, we are we are looking, and we felt very proud of um, of our governments, the Antigua and Barbuda government was certainly a, a leader in it, 
to be able to make sure that uh, loss and damage got onto the agenda at COP27. But we know that these changes will take time. So there's no, there's no magic door that immediately gets open when something goes onto an, an agenda. And, I, and we believe very strongly that it has to be the country and the people that are going to generate uh, um, areas that, that, are, that are going to help to change this. Uh, I'm aware, and, um, and, and my group had, had worked uh, towards uh, 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 encouraging our, gov our government to be able to, um, to work closely with one of the major climate change uh, organizations to, to conduct an, an, an MOU at COP27, which will now allow that entity to come into Antigua to evaluate what are our, what is our potential for carbon credits. We see a small island state like Antigua. We only have 108 square miles on Antigua. When you, but we are, we are three islands, Antigua, Barbuda, Redonda, and with the other two islands, maybe we have another uh, 50 square miles. But our tri triangulation, when it comes to our special economic zone in the sea, that actually creates a space in excess of 40,000 square miles. Now, we have this around us, and um, each island will have some more, some less, because you're always having to measure your equidistances between other parties. But there is, there is opportunity in there. They call that opportunity, I guess, the, the blue economy. And, and, um, and I'm absolutely convinced that how climate change has worked with land-based uh, um, carbon issues and created um, uh, certain principles uh, such as the red plus that, that, we, that we know with, with forestry and, and, and areas like that, there will be a blue plus. And that blue plus opens a door for, for the SIDS to be able to explore it. We have to be able to evaluate it. We have to be able to have it um, uh, 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 audited by identified, recognized third party auditors for, 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 for carbon credits. There's the gold standard, there's Vera, there, there are about three or four others in Microsoft that, that are all equipped to do such uh, evaluations. But once we do that evaluation, I believe that that blue economy is the clean equivalent of having oil and gas. Oh, wow. Oh, well, you know, I suppose it makes sense because when we have a look at some of the big funds out there, such as Norges, for example, they're now de themselves in anything to do with petrocarbon. And now the, the, when you look at India, for example, they're looking at their, not their industrialization using green renewable resources. It makes sense. So then when people look at the Caribbean, when people look at Antigua, and they say, well, what are the opportunities for these small nations, especially post-COVID? And COVID dramatically changed things such as tourism. There's huge amounts of job loss. You, as one of the most senior business individuals on Ireland, do you see the future now being green and blue economy, Wiser? Uh, yes, I see a, a lot of that in there. Um, and, um, and, and I think Antigua is, has been blessed by its geographical positioning because I think it is well positioned also to um, to be a hub for many of these uh, activities. We have, the, we have the opportunity of having one of the most modern airports, international airports here. And, um, and, and I think 
there's a role there that still has to be developed and, and built out. As you will well know, most of the Caribbean islands that are dependent on tourism, they all we all have to, we all have been looking north. Yeah. So 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 the main flow uh, of this service that we provide is towards North America, Europe, England, um, Canada, areas areas like that. So then, as as a bank, then. Um... There's a lot of we speak. I know when we had Kazara and he spoke about even his bank in Nevis that the world almost is holier than the Pope. They look at Caribbean banks and they say, "Well, you guys have done X ones that you're not standing the test of investigation when it comes to transparency." How do you react to that? Because it seems you guys have to go through far more loops than any U.S. bank or any UK oh, bank. Oh, oh, ever believe me. Not, not, not only that, but every. All of our banks, I mean, it is far more difficult for Antiguans and Barbudans to open up bank accounts in Antigua than it is for them to jump on a plane into Miami or the UK and open up an account there. I mean, you can go, you can go to, the, to the US and open up an account in, in, in a day. If, if anybody opens an, an account in, the, in most of the Caribbean territories in, in under a, a week with a bank, they're, they're fortunate. You know, because because we've become so uh, uh, sensitive to the to the all of the ALM CFD type issues, um, we are all fighting to be to be um, uh, 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 compliant with whether it is the, the OFAC requirements, whether it's the FATCA requirements, the OECD, the CRS. You we. We have to we have to comply with that whole range, and um, uh, you know, Antigua is one of the one of the few places where um, uh, our, our our political uh, or politically sensitive people complain. They say, you know, everywhere else, the definition of a pep, a politically exposed person, yeah. is def uh, is de defined as a foreign politically exposed person. In other words, it is very unlikely that that um, the homegrown politicians are going to be uh, um, uh, uh, attempting to do anything in, in illicit activities by keeping the money at home. Yeah. But 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 what you will find with Caribbean banks, they only use one brush, <laughs> one, one one. So so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether whether you're you're, you're foreign or or you or you or you're local. So even even the even and let's face it, um, the governor of a central bank is a pep. Yeah. You know, so it, 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 it's 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 a broad route. Most, all, all the senior um, uh, government public servants will be peps. Yeah. And when you have economies like that, where a lot of people are literally working as civil servants, how do you deal with that? Right, like what, what's some of the big challenges facing a country like Antigua and Barbuda and the Caribbean as a whole? Well, the Caribbean, the Caribbean, uh, we as as you will will know, we've been fighting for years under our CARICOM community uh, arrangements. Um, we really need to be a more collective space. Uh, part of the problem is that we do have. We have the Eastern Caribbean currency, but but then there are different currencies. Whether you're in Jamaica and Trinidad, Barbados, and Guyana. Um, now, the 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 interest that has been given to central bank um, um, using uh, digital coins uh, is something I think that will have to grow, even though there there are concerns about cryptocurrency as such, and that is going to have to have its own rebirth and, and, uh, at, at, at this time, and I'm sure it will. But, the, but, the, but there, there are opportunities for central bank digital coins. However, they have to work alongside more domestic payment uh, utility services. And that's where our, our banks need to lead in to create those types of services that can adopt and work with a digital uh, 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 coin. 
and then we could have a Caribbean digital coin that could easily allow movement of funds across the, um, the region and help to cement the, uh, the community as such. So I think there's a long, there's some very important steps that, um, that banks have to take at this time. And, uh, and I'm sure they, they will be taken. You will find that it's critical for banks to align themselves with the FinTech community and society um, because they're, they've been practiced far more in innovation than, mm-hmm. than banks are. Banks are more traditional, and, um, but, the, but, but the pressure of working with, with a FinTech, I think, uh, assists that. In, 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 in my institution, we do have a subsidiary that is a, that is a FinTech um, uh, grouping that will serve um, uh, banks and processing. They've got banks in Guyana, they've got banks in, 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 in Antigua, in Jamaica, um, in Haiti. Um, and they have been, they, they are more focused on the payments programming side. So I think that's a, that's a, that's a, I can see that is something that is going to be uh, uh, important. Because when we look towards the crypto world, I remember I was, I was speaking with a couple of colleagues and we we're speaking about the crypto coin, obviously um, one coin and how much of a bonanza that created because it created a lot of lack of trust. And actually Kaza wrote an article recently about the crypto king who disappeared in India recently. Like when you look at these fundamental shifts in the way that banking's done and look at the online space, what do you think are some of the biggest misconceptions that people have towards that? Well, you see, the, the, the whole question is trust. Um, and that's what, that's what banking has, which the cryptocurrency arena doesn't have. And so what you really want to do is to find a way to bridge that gap. And, 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 and you see the banks themselves have been hes- hesitant in getting into the crypto space. And in fact, the regulators themselves have been very guarded about them doing so. But I think we might be missing an important point of evolution for payments by not saying if in fact banks were more uh, adapting some of these uh, uh, payment services utilizing more blockchain uh, 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 background to be able to, to make it efficient, that, that then the community would have a better trust or would be able to continue the trust syndrome into the bank, which will then take them into these improved payment services that can better uh, uh, serve the communities. I suppose that's the issue, isn't it? We, we place a great reliance on the integrity of leadership, especially those within the banking sector. And therefore, when we do that, we have to have a look at the evidence that suggests that. Now, as a, as a bank, when you look towards the future of Antigua, what are some of the opportunities outside of the green space, the blue economy and the crypto that you think actually these are game-changing ideas that not only support the social fabric of the country, but also enhance the people in the community's welfare within the country as well? Well, I think one step has to be that we don't give up our, our focus on where we're, 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 we're attracting tourism, but we have to build alternatives. Now, a lot of the world, and that means, um, that means Asia, including China and the, uh, and the Middle East and even Africa, <clears throat> We don't really get them being able to travel into the Caribbean. Mm. Now here we are, a cricketing nation. We've got some of the most wonderful um, uh, heroes and stalwarts of, of cricket. Um, let's, uh, let's steady on here, Brian. Let's steady yeah. on. It's, it's a cricketing nation, <laughs> but I want to say it's the cricketing nation. <laughs> it is. It is. It has been. It has been. And but and so so can you imagine if we had proper linkages, um, uh, and, I'm, and I'm referring to, 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 to air links uh, and people to being able to travel, they're yeah, probably air links. You, if you were playing India in the Caribbean, do you know you'd have plane loads of 
Indians coming to be able to follow that team and, ce and, and celebrate the, the, the matches across the, the Caribbean. If you had Bangladesh, the same thing would happen. Um, if you have had some of the some of the Middle East countries that are that are that, that, that are playing cricket, so you, you've got a whole you've got a whole sports tourism opportunity that has gone untapped. Now, what is the big problem? The big problem is that many of those people from the from those areas do not have access to visas because to travel to, to the Caribbean, because to travel to the Caribbean means having to travel to either the UK or to the US or Canada to then come on to the Caribbean. And they don't have those visas. So we need to explore um, with airlines in Asia, in China, in other, in Africa, looking at creating more direct flights to us. And it doesn't have to be always direct, direct. There are some linkages um, such as uh, Frankfurt Airport that will permit uh, flights to, to come in there and have people come in transit. But we will have to have our air airlines picking them up from Frankfurt to bring them on. Now that would change our, that would change our entire uh, 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 aspect of, 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 of how we've been, how we've conceived uh, tourism, because we would have to be building hotels that can better serve some of those markets, serve some of those cultures. Um, we, we would, we, we have, we have, <clears throat> we have the opportunity, we have one of the best uh, seaports in the Caribbean. And we've just had significant uh, investments in, in, in improving it. If we were a hub for some of that transportation and, and linkage coming in from these new markets. Uh, they could come here to Antigua, spend a couple of, of, of days in, in our hotels, go on to a home ported cruise ship, go and visit another six Caribbean islands, come back here and take off again. I must say I'm smiling because I'm thinking, I know the view outside my window in London. It is 50 shades of gray skies and it is raining. It's <laughs> almost like a British summer all over again. And you're telling me about this romanticized version of visiting Antigua and traveling more out the way around. It does make sense. Is it? Do you think it's a lack of will or is it a lack of know-how for the international markets or maybe some of the companies within the Caribbean to make this happen? Well, <clears throat> you see, we need... That needs financing, so we're going to need some external financing to, to give support to it. There are different areas of financing that 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 are coming um, uh, uh, um, uh, on board. The um, the Africa's Afri Exim Bank uh, yeah. just allocated, I think, about one point five billion uh, to to for for Caribbean uh, development work. Um, in China, there is the Belt and Road Initiative. And, um, and their airlines have a lot of extra capacity and have had it and now since, since the pandemic they're, they're, that, that, that could be could be generated. Uh, so I, I, I think that with the right package of investors, we can, we, we can identify those opportunities. With the same right in, uh, package of investors, we can, we can expand our home porting. Um, and and let's face it, it's a, such a program wouldn't just benefit Antigua. It, it would be, if you're going to visit the, the six or seven islands um, this time, and that's in, in the south and six and seven uh, in, in, in the north, what you're doing is expanding the, the economic opportunities for, for all of the Caribbean. Do you know, Brown, what I find interesting with you is because every time we do speak, you are almost the, the official ambassador, custodian of Antigua. You're a banker by day, and almost uh, an Antigua cheerleader by night. I should really put that the other way around, otherwise I give people the wrong impression of what you get up to on Friday evenings. Um, but it is really interesting because Antigua is a home for you. Now, when you think, to sum it up for our audience out there, we have an audience in over 48 countries around the planet, CEOs, heads of states, people of real know-how. What do you want them to remember about a country like Antigua, especially now? where the whole idea of national identity is more important than ever? 
well, you know, Antigua is a friendly environment. It is, it is, it is a safe environment. Yes, we look at the Caribbean and we, and it is a, a, a safe zone. Uh, but Antigua is particularly um, safe. Uh, it is a place that when you look at the volatility of uh, what is happening in the rest of the world, it is a, it is a good place to be able to, to visit. Uh, and I think that the economic opportunities for once, once you come to visit, you will see a, a bundle of, of, of opportunities that can perhaps attract your investment. We we have we've just launched uh, in in Antigua just uh, about three weeks ago the opening of our new uh, uh, commercial port. Now the first port that was done in Antigua was more than fifty years ago by Antigua's father of the nation VC Bird. <clears throat> At that time, it didn't have any provision for containers. So now. The whole port has been modernized uh, and it, it, it actually has the opportunity under this new design that has now been, been opened to be a transshipment hub. And I think that will be positive. And once you have that, then you are creating logistics. Logistics mm -hmm. creates other work. It, saying, cre it creates other employment. And, you know. It's a virtuous cycle, isn't it? But a lot of these developments yeah. have happened in the last couple of years in Antigua, it seems. It seems like there's this renaissance of Antigua going on for the last four to five years or so, which is really interesting because you've been looking at the airport, for example, I know that there was conversations that we had about the city. Then there was conversations around Green Bond. There seems to be a new willingness that's been there, that's been injected in. Do you think that willingness will continue then into the future as well? I, I think so. Now, I mean, I, I think the commitment is there in the community, uh, banks, Banks like us, it, we we work, we work with with all parties. We work with all political sides. Uh, we have to, uh, because because uh, life changes. And but what is important is that the thread of the opportunity for development, and that and that should be in this case now sustainable development, um, it continues to be engaged. And, uh, and continues to increase its stakeholders so that we can all work towards achieving the goals for society. I like that. It's about national development, national prosperity building, isn't it? It's everybody Absolutely. coming together to say, this is what the future of a nation looks like and operating without fear or favor. Because you have to have, obviously, the banking systems, the financial services, hand in hand with the tourism industries. And it is this virtuous circle that almost you have been the godfather for. Brian, I could speak to you forever, but it's been an absolute you. pleasure having you on. And I think it's quite remarkable for the fact that when people look at the banking industry, they normally look at it with uh, the eyes of a monopoly board, or they look at it with fear and reputation. But the fact is, as a bank, what you've done is not only showcase the very best of what Antigua is doing, but you're providing a lot more trust within the system itself. And being that you guys are, I want to say the word overtly regulated, which I think is fair to say. It just shows that it's done the test of investigation at every single turn. Um, Brian, it is fantastic to see you once more. Raj, I thank you very much. You're welcome.